So far we have two pedals to play around with, but we don't have any ball to play with. So let's create a ball to bounce in between these two pedals. Okay, so let's go to this section up here and make a space for the ball variable. I'm going to say ball. What do you think the variable here should be? Yes, it's just a turtle like any other turtle. But this turtle will be a little bit different in shape. So we're going to say ball.shape. Then the shape here is circle. Makes sense since this is a ball. And we need the color. So ball.color. Let's give it the green color. Okay. All right. Now let's do a pinup so that we don't draw the trace when we are relocating the ball. And let's set the ball at the center of the screen. So we'll say ball dot go to zero zero. Now, what I would like to do here is to define what we call a DX. This will be the step of the ball when it is moving. Okay, so here I'm going to say ball dot DX will equal to 0 0.1. Okay, and ball dot DY will equal to minus 0 0.1. We will see what those terms mean when we progress a little bit. But for now, let's define the change in x and change in y to be 0 0.1 and minus 0 0.1, respectively. Now let's try to see how the window looks like. Reset everything and rerun the program. And here we go. Here we have a ball right now that we actually can just go under it. But it does not move, it does not bounce, it does nothing. How about we add some functionality to that ball, right? How about we create a function just right here to move the ball? And I'm going to call it move ball. How would this function look like? Well, to move a ball, we need to set x and y values all the time, right? I mean, moving a ball all the time means that x and y are just constantly changing. So I'm going to say ball dot set x. What are we going to set x into? Well, we will set it to ball dot x coordinate. So whatever our current x coordinate is, plus ball dot dx. What did we do here? You already know the x the set x function. We have used it a lot here, which is used to give a new location on the x axis. Now I'm saying the ball location should be the current location. Let's say it is at zero zero plus this small change. This small change is zero point one. So every time we call this function, it will be the current location plus zero point one. And if we call it all the time, you will, you will see that this dx will be changing all the time as well, right? If I call it 10 times, it will be x plus 0 0.1, it is 0 0.1. Then it is x plus 0 0.1, the x is already 0 0.1, plus 0 0.1, it will be 0 0.2. So the ball will be moving constantly. Now, how about we set a y movement as well? So we'll say ball dot set y. And then I'm going to say ball dot y coordinate plus ball dot dy. Does this make sense? The same thing, but we are moving the dy as well. Okay. All right. It means that the dy will always be moving to the negative y axis and the ball will always be moving in the positive x axis. Just initially, it will be like that. Now, how about we set some boundaries? Because without it, the ball will go out of the screen. But let's test this out. Maybe let me show you one step at a time how will the window look like. Close this and just rerun. You'll see that the ball is not moving at all. Why? Because we did not call this function yet. Where should we call this function? Well, I'm going to show you. All you need to do is just go to the while loop and say here, move ball okay does this make sense move ball will be called all the time it means that the ball x and y coordinates will change constantly because we are changing them 
every time we call this function. And we are calling it infinitely because we are in the infinite loop. Now the ball will not stop, but it will go out of the screen. Let's take a look together. We'll see that the ball is already went out of the screen and we cannot see it. Okay, so let's set the boundaries and this will keep the ball bouncing inside the window. The boundaries will be left, up, down and right. So we need just to set four boundaries. So let's do that. I'm going to say here x is equal to ball dot x coordinate. So first I would like to see where is the ball right now. Then I want to check the boundaries. I'm going to store the x and the y in variables. So here ball dot y coordinate is equal like this. All right. So now we have the x and the y. I'm going to say here if x is larger than 390, meaning we are trying to set the right boundaries. Then I would like to say ball dot set x to be at 390. Okay. Then I would like to change the direction of the x axis because if the ball hits the boundary, we need it to bounce back. How can we do that? By changing this movement into a minus movement. Meaning instead of incrementing 0.1 to the current position in every frame, when we bounce from the right, we would like to take it to the opposite direction of the bouncing, right? Meaning that it should be minus here. And this is what we will do. We're going to say ball dot dx is equal to ball dot dx multiplied by minus 1, right? This will change this whole positive dx into a negative dx meaning the ball will bounce in the opposite direction okay so this is the first boundary now let's set the second boundary which is on the far left side so if x is less than minus 390 what i would like to do is ball dot set x minus 390 and we need to negate the direction right so we're going to say the same thing here whatever the ball direction is just negate it to go in the other way negation happens only by multiplying by minus one all the time if you are in the positive you multiply by minus one you change everything to go to the negative okay now let's set the upper boundary so if y is larger than 290 then ball dot set y will be 290 and then we need now to negate the ball dot dy this time right because when we hit the upper boundary we would like to go down going down means that y need to be in the negative direction so ball dy will equal to ball dot dy multiplied by minus one okay and finally we need to put the boundary on the bottom of the screen so if y is less than minus 290 then ball dot set y will be minus 290 and then we will negate again so ball dot set y equals to ball dot set y multiplied by minus one now the bouncing should happen and the ball should never go out of boundaries I'm going to reset all of this and run again. Uh, yeah, okay, we have a problem here. We said set, set y instead of dy, so this should be dy and this should be dy. Okay, again, let's run it. And here we go. We can see now that the ball is just moving and bouncing around the corners. Now, there is no collision detection in this program, meaning that we did not decide what happens when the rectangle hits the ball, but at least the ball is actually just moving around in the corners without any issues. It's not going out of the screen anymore. All we need to do right now is to design some collision detection to let the paddle hit the ball.